I think I'll just hand over to Karen to talk a bit about social services. Thank you. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm not used to uh, speaking with a microphone. Um, this is uh, an attempt on a page to capture the, the huge piece of work happening in case you see at the moment around um, the transformation of, of social care. Um, and it actually joins up with um, all of the themes that have been identified in terms of the local care and the, uh, the activity that's happening uh, within the NHS. So the key thing um, about, the, about the strategy is that it's actually based on three key themes, which is around promoting well-being, um, around promoting independence and supporting independence. And the promoting well-being is actually things that help people keep well in their own communities. Um, better access to information and guidance, keeping people within their own homes and their own localities, um, and having people around that can help them navigate some of the complexities of the systems, both um, in social care and in health. Um, the second theme around promoting independence it's really around helping people to um, look at their own care, actually looking at integrated rehabilitation, self-assessment, um, looking at the ways that we uh, keep people in their own homes, looking at transition between, uh, for young people with learning disabilities, for example, and how they can move from uh, a children's service into an adult service. Um, and actually helping them along the way and stopping them falling off a cliff edge at, at the age of 18. And the third theme, which is around supporting independence, is around making, giving people the right support at the right time, um, ensuring that people uh, have their outcomes met appropriately, um, and that making sure that when people are discharged from hospital, for example, they have the right support in their own home to help them be uh, sustained and, and well and happy in that environment. Um, underpinning all of this, which Sanjay has referred to, is around the issues around workforce, and we appreciate that there's a massive workforce within social care. Some of it is within KCC, but a huge proportion of it is outside in other private providers, in care homes, uh, in domiciliary providers, and we're working with those um, people and um, uh, companies and voluntary agencies to make sure that there is capacity in the workforce to, to support the themes um, that we're working on at the moment. I've been given a time warning, so I'll try to go for it. This is just illustrating an example. Um, so, we'll call it Dorothy. But just imagine Dorothy is 85 year old, has got dementia, diabetes, and heart failure, lives alone. At the moment, the care around her is mostly <laughs> reactive and uncoordinated. And as a result, she often slips through the net and ends up in a hospital. Because whether it's for a medical reason or for a non-medical reason, that's deemed to be the absolute place of safety in the absence of systems in the community. It's not good for her and up in hospital. Every time she goes into hospital, her health takes a further dip on the long-term basis. I think the future, when we design this, we need to design services around Dorothy that is consistent, well organized. Um, her input, her carer's input, her family input is taken into account. It's simple. I think for a vast majority, people are confused who to approach, where to access services when they need it. So we have come with eight ambitions for Dorothy, which is in the slide, but essentially the care is organized with her input. Um, it maintains her independence, allows her to live at home or place of a choice, that she's safe where she lives, that there's a multi-skilled team around her looking after her diverse needs, 
which could be clinical, non-clinical, social, psychological, mobility, anything, that she had simple access mechanisms, a single number to call, which is consistent. She has that 24 hours. And when she needs specialist help, it's available in the community as well. She doesn't need to travel to hospital to get that specialist help. So that's the turnaround we need to achieve for Dorothy as we go uh, in this journey. Because if we don't, we had have failed those complex patients. Local care helps was the third strand. These are physical infrastructures uh, which would provide services that don't need to be in the main hospital. And um, I'll give a few examples of what could be based, and that's just our initial thinking. Um, but there's a lot of things that need not be in hospital, cannot be provided in the practice infrastructures like falls, mental health services, some outpatient clinics, rehab, etc. So another list, I think. But we'll plan it, not just on health, but with our partners like district councils and KCC, because it's not about just health, it's about health and well-being. Councils do a lot of well-being services. And it would make sense that we come together in designing those hubs and decide which appropriate services could be based here, which gives a holistic care um, to our patient population. I think I'll now hand over to Ian. Still do that at my age. <laughs> right, thank you. Um, Sanjay and colleagues have talked about what we can provide by strengthening primary care, by putting multidisciplinary teams around clusters of primary care, and what we might put in hubs. But there are a number of services which we need to provide across the whole of West Kent. Urgent care services, which I'm not going to talk about, a colleague of mine will pick up in a minute, but bed-based services. Sanjay mentioned that there were up to a thousand people sitting in hospital beds across Kent and Medway, whom in the opinion of doctors and nurses who are caring for them, don't need the full range of specialist support a hospital gives, and may be better having been cared for differently before admission, may never have gone to hospital, or by moving into a bed in a community somewhere, might be better cared for there. We know that if you assess someone's needs when they're in a hospital bed, you don't get the right answer. I know, I've got eight old, old relatives, I know if you took them into hospital and looked at what you could do, you wouldn't let them back home. But they're coping perfectly well at home at the moment. Um, so we know that putting people back in their own bed in the community, or possibly in a community hospital or a care home bed, supporting them there, giving them intensive therapy, helping them to cope, we know that that allows them, in a sense, a better ongoing future. We know that across Kent and Medway there are up to a thousand people who would benefit from that. We don't know exactly how many in West Kent, we're still working on that. We know that we will need beds in the community in West Kent. Some in people's homes, supported by nurses and therapists. Some in community hospitals. And some in care homes that we purchase extra support for. We currently have four community hospitals in West Kent. Sevenoaks, Tunbridge, Edenbridge and Hawkehurst. And you're all going to ask me what happens to each of those and the honest answer yet. Yeah. Next slide please. Oh, I suppose to have a clicker. I've asked my beautiful assistant. Um, we don't know yet, we're still working. What we do know is those four community hospitals we've had have served us really well for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But we also know that they won't serve us well for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years unless we do something about the quality of that estate. Um, we know that we need to do something with that. We know we need more. And we're now starting the work of exactly what, where, when and how, um, and how much it will cost and where we get that money from. Um, we are already working with five GP practices to help them develop and, and, and 
move into better premises. We've got a huge amount of work to do with our 60 GP practices to move them into better premises. We've got to do work with our community hospitals. If this model of care is right, we will need more rather than less resources in the community. We have just completed a piece of work consulting with a local community in Edenbridge about the future of the practice and the community hospital there. And in the next few weeks, we'll take our decision about what we do there. But it will be development, not retrenchment. Um, and we will need to do similar pieces of work across the whole of our estate. We're looking at the utilisation of our estate. We're looking with districts, local, uh, Kent County Council, about how do we bring some of those services together in shared estates. Um, that's probably all, all to say on that. Um, we will produce a set of options. The stage we're at at the moment is to work out, is this the right model? Do we have support for that? And then we work to the next stage about what it, what it means specifically. And I have no idea who I hand over to. Back to Sanjay. Don't worry, I'm, I'm on at time. Worse. <laughs> Hopefully. Thanks again. So I think t to deliver local care, to get it right, um, the four strands, the right plan would help, obviously, underpinned by the states, the right workforce, and the right IT. I think we could use technology much better than we are using now. Not only for healthcare teams, but for population as well. Um, apps and online information to support you text messaging, online booking, etc., etc. So we're working on that as well. We're working on identifying new roles in the workforce strand, like care navigators, paramedic practitioners, clinical pharmacists, which haven't been in existence in the past. Um, so there's a lot of exciting piece of work going on at the moment, and hopefully this will lead to much better outcomes in the future. And lastly, what does it mean for you? And there are a few strands, more self-care, same day GP appointments. But I think if we just take maybe, if we're talking about transformation, if we imagine ourselves four years from now, if we get it right, I just want us to think what it would look like. From the physical aspect, it would look different. You'll have different states, different workforce, a much upgraded IT system to deliver healthcare and social services. But from the patient's perspective, um, and that's the important bit, hopefully you'll feel more empowered, more listened to, be at the center of decision making around your care plan rather than that being done to you. Supported by a multidisciplinary team to, with diverse abilities to look after the diverse needs of a complex patient. Services that are readily available and close to you. Hospital being probably the last resort to provide some very specialist services only. And hopefully for the individual and the population, there's a much better connect than present between the NHS, the social services, and the voluntary sector. That is if we can pull it off with your help and feedback. Thank you very much for listening.